When 151 comes to Pokemon TCG Live, there will be several new decks appearing on the ladder. While Giratina Lost Zone will probably still be the BDIF for all the cool people, you'll be able to enjoy fresh archetypes like Blastoise EX, Alakazam EX, and Arbok EX, with old decks like Mew VMAX and Charizard EX getting helpful new additions. I'll put lists in the description so you can easily copy and paste them into live once 151 goes live at 10am Pacific, 1pm Eastern on Thursday, September 21st, and I'll be playing them on stream nearly every day beginning at 2pm Pacific. I'll be kicking things off with the old decks that get new tricks, and chief among them is Charizard EX. After rising to fame last month, Charizard EX from Obsidian Flames gets some super straightforward upgrades. First, remove one card and replace it with the new Charizard EX. Then, take out the old Charmander and Pidgey and replace them with the new ones. That, that, that's it, and now your deck is better. The new Charizard from 151 has a couple of advantages over the OF Charizard. Primarily, it's a fire type and hits grass types for weakness. So if your opponent tacked in something like Shaman V or Leafeon V to deal with the dark type Charizard, now you can one-shot them for as little as one energy provided Zard has a damage counter on it. And if you play Magma Basin, that's easier than ever. But the main reason to have the 151 Charizard is for its second attack. For four energy, you deal 330 damage. Yes, you have to discard three energy as a result, but being able to one-shot nearly anything on your opponent's side of the field as early as turn two is something the deck was lacking. You either attacked for 200 with Arceus V-Star or 180 with Charizard EX. Now it's 330 and people have to be afraid if they see two Charmander on your board at once. As I mentioned in my crafting guide, Charizard EX on its own likely won't be a top deck as you have to play something like Armor Rouge, which takes away a spot from a consistency card like Arceus or Pidgeot. One more thing, because certain builds run level ball, it's up to you if you want to swap out the 90 hit point Charmeleon for the 100 hit point one. If you don't have level ball in your deck, you may as well go for the beefier chameleon. It's important for your growth as a human being to admit when you're wrong. Thankfully, I'm never wrong, and I totally meant to act like Snatch Arm wasn't very good, but I fooled you. I fooled you all. Snatch Arm actually makes Mew VMAX so much better. Remember when you all said this deck was done with the release of Spiritomb, then it won Worlds? Well, technically it was the Fusion Energy Meloetta build that won Worlds, not this one. That's because Spiritomb and a few other cards were major problems for the control build of Mew. But with Snatch Arm and 151, get ready to see a return of this monstrosity. All you have to do to upgrade this build is add in three Snatch Arm. Then it's a simple case of using Path to the Peak and Judge in the same turn, then finishing it up with Snatch Arm to remove any potential problem Pokemon from their hand. And even if Snatch Arm doesn't get you anything, you still have the added information of knowing what's in your opponent's hand. Thankfully, Control Mew does have a weakness, that Spiritomb. While Path to the Peak limits the danger Drapion V can present to this deck, you have no Spiritomb counter. That's why the Fusion Energy version won Worlds, Fusion Strike Energy can be attached to a Genesect V, allowing it to draw cards with Spiritomb in play. No Fusion Energy means Spiritomb is a roadblock, but if Spiritomb never hits the field, this deck will be a nightmare to face in PDCGL. Go ahead, name a deck. Any deck, I'll wait. Okay, not, not that one. But yes, that one. Mew EX can fit into it. Gardevoir EX, Baxcalibur, Ludia Archeops, Lost Box, and Maridon Flaffy are just a few of the decks that Mew EX can penetrate. Not only is the ability helpful, drawing you up to three cards in hand, and it has free retreat, but the attack allows you to copy any attack on your opponent's active Pokemon. Similar to the new Charizard, Mew EX isn't difficult to add to a deck. Just remove your least playable card and put in Mew EX. I've included six different Mew EX lists in the description, all based on some of the biggest archetypes in Standard right now. Basically, Mew offers up three very important things. One, the free retreat, giving you the perfect pivot. Two, the ability, which draws you up to three cards in hand, meaning you're not punished for overplaying each turn. And three, it can copy any attack on your opponent's active Pokemon for three colorless. For the Flaffy build, a manual attachment and two Flaffy attachments mean you can whip up a fresh Mew EX in one turn. For the Charizard EX build, you can put those three energy from Charizard's ability directly onto Mew. Baxcalibur can accelerate water energy from your hand to any of your Pokemon. Gardevoir can accelerate Psyche energy from your discard pile to Mew EX at the cost of putting two damage counters on it each time. The Archeops and Ludia V-Star can attach any special energy from your deck to Mew EX, but you do have to be careful about the damage reduction something like Double Turbo Energy provides. And Lost Box can use Mirage Date to put whatever basic energy is in the deck onto Mew EX. There's so many different ways to use Mew EX, it's insane. 
Just be aware that focusing a deck solely on Mew EX isn't a great idea. Even with the Bravery Charm, it only has 230 hit points, so always be aware of what's going on before you put it into play. Because an Arceus V-Star can one-shot Mew with a double turbo attached. Alright, let's finally move to the new archetypes being introduced with 151. Blastoise EX can deal 280 damage by discarding 2 energy from your hand. And what's great is that you probably own most of the other cards in the deck, as several have been given away for free or are currently free and live. And because this version uses the 70 hit point Stortle from Pokemon Go, the only new cards from 151 are the three copies of Blastoise. One of the main cards in Blastoise is Irida. On turn 1, it can get you a Battle VIP pass in any water Pokemon, thus ensuring a strong first turn. Then on turn 2, it can get you a Rare Candy and Blastoise, giving you access to your best attacker. You will likely have to use Palkia's V-Star ability to accelerate the energy to Blastoise, which means using Radiant Greninja's ability on those first two turns is going to make your life a lot easier. After that, just keep putting energy back into your hand with Energy Retrieval and piece your way to victory. This list is based on one I saw in Japan, so feel free to make whatever changes you think are necessary, like using Link Acuity to reduce the amount of damage Blastoise receives, or Experience Share to keep energy in play without the need for Raihan, or you could even test out the 60 hit points Squirtle which has coin flip based immunity from damage. Arbok EX is the deck everyone will learn to fear, and there's a few different ways to play it. The simplest is using a combination of Judge and Path to the Peak, then hitting them with Menacing Fangs to force them to discard two cards from their hand. You can also use Snatch Arm ahead of Menacing Fangs to remove a Pokemon from their hand, ultimately leaving them with one card and no abilities thanks to Path to the Peak. I'll show some Japanese lists in a minute, but for now I decided to go with Maximum Consistency and choose a Curlia build of the deck. I admit it's not the most powerful, but you get to see the Judge, Path to the Peak combo in action. Just get as many basics down turn 1 as possible, then evolve into Curlia and Arbok EX on turn 2, hopefully attaching enough energy with Dark Patch, then start removing cards from their hand. It's a straightforward strategy, all you have to do is figure out the best way to get it going on turn 2. As for some of those Japanese lists I saw, we've got this one featuring Absol EX. Absol does 220 damage if your opponent has 3 or fewer cards in hand, meaning it's a decent partner for Arbok. It also runs Snatch Arm, another card that combos well with Absol, Energy Switch to get energy off of Galarian Moltres V, Crushing Hammer, and Giovanni's Charisma. Giovanni could be an interesting partner for Arbok. It sends an energy from your opponent's active into their hand while also accelerating energy from your hand. Another list is this one featuring Darkrai V-Star. Darkrai's V-Star power puts two items back into your hand from the discard pile, perfect for reusing Dark Patch. So while you're annoying your opponent with Arbok, you're also building up damage for Darkrai to take a big one-hit KO later on in the game. And finally, this version puts the focus solely on Arbok. You still play Peek and Judge, but you want to utilize Squawkabilly EX and Radiant Greninja instead of Curlia to have a fast start. This also plays Snatch Arm and throws in two copies of Energy Seal, which is like Dark Patch except it requires a coin flip. None of the Japanese lists I saw played Spirit Mask, and only one used Rigid Band to reduce the damage Arbok takes by 30. Regardless of how you want to play Arbok, the whole goal is to limit your opponent's ability to play the game, which I can only assume is super fun for them. Nearly three years after Yuri Geller ended the 20-year legal dispute over Kadabra, 151 brings together Abra, Kadabra, and Alakazam in the same set. To celebrate this momentous occasion, the Pokemon company decided to troll the PDCGL developers and create a Pokemon that attacks from the bench. For 2 Psychic Energy, Alakazam EX deals 120 damage, all while sitting safely on the bench. Although Alakazam has a good first attack that can deal up to 240 damage, every successful Japanese list I've seen focuses on Dimensional Hand. The strength of Alakazam depends on the Pokemon you can leave in the active spot to slow down your opponent while you set up this stage too. Thankfully, we have several great options. Arguably the best is Klefki, which shuts off the abilities of all basic Pokemon. This means Comfey can't use Flower Selecting, Cramorant can't attack for free, Radiant Greninja can't discard and draw 2, Squatchabilly EX can't discard their hand and draw 6, and so on. Mimikyu, meanwhile, is immune to damage from V and EX Pokemon. Obviously, it's fairly useless against Lost Box, but against something like Miraidon, it will most likely buy you that time you need. Then we have Snorlax, which prevents your opponent from retreating, and Palkia, which stops them from playing stadiums, meaning a path to the peak will be harder for them to bump. 
Empoleon V is an alternative to Klefki, but it gives up two prizes and doesn't shut off the abilities of Pokemon with a rule box. While Alakazam has a lot of potential, keep in mind that Klefki and Empoleon also shut off your Manaphy's Bench Barrier ability, so your opponent can still snipe the bench if you aren't careful. Pretty much every Japanese list I saw relied on manual attachments, but I highly recommend playing either Energy Seal or Raihan, which will give yourself some comeback potential. You could also chuck in a copy of Double Turbo to surprise them with a Mind Jack. Sticking with a deck that's designed to slow down the game and annoy your opponent, we have Wigglytuff EX. The ability, Expanding Body, gives Wigglytuff an extra 100 hit points if it has a special energy attached. While that's great, the attack isn't. Since you're relying on Double Turbo, Wigglytuff will be doing no more than 160 damage per turn. So you have to stall for as long as possible in order to win, and that's where Charon's Care comes in. Odds are your opponent won't be able to one-shot Wigglytuff EX. Between the HP boost and Rigid Band reducing damage by 30, it has in effect 380 hit points. The only Japanese list I could find played three copies of Charon's Care, which puts any damaged colorless Pokemon back into your hand. Between those three copies and two Palpad, you're recycling Wigglytuff all game long. But how do you get energy back on Wigglytuff EX? Well, the baby Wigglytuff, of course! That one attaches a therapeutic energy from your hand to one of your Pokemon. So bring up a damaged Wigglytuff, put up a fresh one, manually attach the double turbo, accelerate the therapeutic, and repeat until you win. Admittedly, the list from Japan has some issues. There's no stadium for starters. I think two copies of Artisan makes a lot of sense. Also, it only plays two of each Wigglytuff, which is risky, and there's no Manaphy. If you make all the necessary changes, this is closer to what I think you want Wigglytuff to look like. Basically, just deny your opponent from taking prizes for as long as possible, all while slowly chipping away at their Pokémon. Because I feel bad for Tyranitar EX, I'll, I'll include it here. There was some hype surrounding it ahead of Obsidian Flames, which I didn't believe, and as expected, the card didn't really do anything. But now we have the perfect partner in Dodrio from 151. Dodrio damages itself while also drawing you a card, thus activating Tyranitar's second attack to deal 250 damage. And that's about it. Like a terrible song, Tyranitar is fairly one note. The only real spice is the Dark type baby Tyranitar, which can deal with Pokemon like Mew VMAX and Gardevoir EX. Otherwise, the deck is similar to what it was in the Obsidian Flames meta. Dodrio just makes it a bit more cohesive and gives it another attacker, as Dodrio does more damage for the amount of damage counters on it. Other options for Tyranitar include Cheryl to heal off damage. Energy Seal to accelerate energy from the discard pile to use Lightning Rampage out of nowhere, and a 1-1 Pidgeot EX since you're already running 4 copies of Rare Candy. You can also swap out Tyranitar for Zoroark V-Star and run that with Dodrio instead, since they function somewhat similarly. And there you go, these are shaping up to be the best new decks from 151. If you're thinking I missed a certain deck or archetype, like maybe a Kangaroo Pokemon, don't worry. I'll be doing a video focusing on the Rogue decks introduced in 151 later this week. Until then, let everyone know which deck you think will be the best from 151 in the comments.